So it turns out the LA Dodgers won't go 162 and 0 after the world champs lost in zany fashion on opening day. Honestly, I still can't believe it. Like any of it. Cody Bellinger hit a home run until he did it. Take a look at this. Justin Turner inexplicably thought the outfielder made the catch and turned back to trot to first. Bellinger darted past him, obviously, and it went in the books because of this gaff by Turner as a single RBI and an out. You can't make this up. You don't even see that in Little League. That was Bad News Bears-esque style of play. It was wild. But I would make this case. It wasn't even the most surprising thing that happened to Los Angeles. Clayton Kershaw got rocked on opening day. My generation, Sandy Koufax, best pitcher in baseball history, missed their opening day. Kershaw got lit up like a Christmas tree in December by a dreadful Colorado Rockies team. Kershaw in his prior eight opening day starts had given up combined six earned runs. And then take a look at what transpired yesterday. The Dodgers winning behind Kershaw was supposed to be the absolute lock of the century. But the beauty is the Dodgers won the World Series last year, so LA fans can take a breath and remind themselves there are 161 more games and they do have not being subject to hyperbole legendary talent. And tonight the embarrassment of riches of arguably the most talented team in baseball history is going to be on full display with Trevor Bauer making his debut in Dodger blue and Bauer just won the Cy Young and he is fantastic. Not gonna hear, not gonna feel the pressure of the contract. Bauer is too much of an alpha dog for that. The expectations, well, it's for Trevor Bauer to go out and win and dominate and fit in in LA like a glove despite his very different persona and personality. There is no doubt the Dodgers will flex their muscle the rest of the weekend in Colorado, you know, assuming they remember not to pass each other on the bases. Time right now for a special opening day edition of My Guys. And let's start at number five with my guy, Christian Yelich. You know my guy, Christian Yelich, one of my favorite players in baseball. And my guy, Christian Yelich, had a pair of hits yesterday, including an RBI single in the ninth to start the Brewers' incredible comeback against the Minnesota Twins. My guy, Christian Yelich, is a megastar. My guy Christian Yelich is going to bounce back from a bad shortened season a year ago. My guy Christian Yelich is absolutely going to be in the mix for NL MVP this year. My guy Christian Yelich, part of the reason why we said we love the over for the Brewers win total for this season. At number four, my guy Nolan Arenado. What a debut in a Cardinals jersey. For my guy, Nolan Arenado, a couple of hits, an RBI, a run scored. First game with St. Louis, and this was awesome, and it was predictable. My guy, Nolan Arenado, is a superstar. He's going to be a force at the plate, at third base. He's so great in the field, and they're going to love him in St. Louis, a real baseball city, unlike Colorado. I mean, they don't care about the Rockies in Denver, let's be honest. I think the Cardinals will end up winning the division. Big reason why, main reason why, the trade they made in the offseason for my guy, Nolan Arenado. At number three, my guy, Mike Trout. You know I love my guy, Mike Trout. I think he's the best baseball player in the history of the game. And how about last night? Tied up the ball game in the eighth inning against the Chicago White Sox with an RBI single. Because of course he did. But here was the best part when you take a look at Mike Trout when he got to first. He's fired up. He is going nuts, pumping his fist, saying raise the roof, firing up his teammates. Normally, Mike Trout doesn't show that kind of emotion. But look, by his own standards, 2020, bad season. Listen, Mike Trout wants to make the playoffs. We picked Mike Trout to make the postseason. We picked the Angels to, when it was all said and done, win the division. 
I believe my guy, Mike Trout, will go down as the best player in the history of Major League Baseball. Big win last night when you look at it. Coming from behind against a team that had an amazing offseason, the Chicago White Sox. Man, I love that. I love the emotion. I love the talent. I love my guy, Mike Trout. Angels going to make the playoffs, I'm telling you. Number two, my guy, Joe Girardi. Love my guy, Joe Girardi. And my guy, Joe Girardi, is a tremendous manager. And I love what he did yesterday, expertly managing the Phillies to an opening day win over the Braves. My guy, Gene Segura, played hero with the walk-off single in the bottom of the 10th. And we said it's on Wednesday before the season started. You know that I like this Phillies team to hit their over on wins this year. I felt bad for my guy, Joe Girardi, with all the issues last year in the bullpen. So this... This is great. And Girardi did a great job with Nola yesterday. Went to take him out. The bullpen made my guy Joe Girardi look great. I thought he used his bullpen perfectly to keep the game scoreless, to set it all up for the heroics for Philadelphia. And listen, they had to deal with adversity in the ball game yesterday with the bomb from Sandoval. I loved what I saw, and I was not surprised from my guy Joe Girardi. And at number one, my guy, Miguel Cabrera. I mean, how cool was this? My guy, Miggy, getting jiggy with it, hitting a majestic home run through the snow against the Beebs, the reigning Cy Young Award winner. But take a look at this. He slid into second base. Miggy couldn't see that the ball left the yard and missed the snowflakes. I mean, that to me was the moment, the snapshot when you take a look at opening day and I mean it's so cool I mean Miguel Cabrera is unofficially 98 years old and you look at his numbers remember what he was with the Marlins with Detroit I mean we're talking about one of the single greatest offensive ball players from the right side of the dish in baseball history you have forgotten about him because in Detroit Tigers are terrible he's had injuries that could end up being his one shining moment of the season that was awesome. He slid into second base. My guy, Miguel Cabrera. I love baseball and I love opening day. That was fun stuff. How great is this? We have the final four from Indianapolis tomorrow on CBS. And the four teams went through practice today with the run through broadcast exclusively earlier right here on CBS Sports Network. And look, you have four excellent teams worthy of center stage with superstar players who have really elevated their game in March. But having said all that, it's Gonzaga's world. We're just living in it. This team is special. What they've done in the regular season and postseason in round to a 30-0 record is both majestic and historic. Naismith Coach of the Year Mark Few has built a juggernaut program in lovely Spokane, Washington with his bare hands. They destroyed USC, and I want to stress it. The Trojans are a really good team. And the turning point of the ball game of the Elite Eight was the opening tip. Drew Timmy unstoppable. Jalen Suggs, hey, just an incredible court-savvy star who can easily be the top pick in the upcoming NBA draft. Corey Kispert is exceptional. They move the ball so crisply. No ego. They play a gorgeous and unselfish style of ball that has them marching towards history. And when it happens, Mark Few's team deserves to be celebrated as an all-time squad. Now, I love Mick Cronin. I love UCLA. Want to stress it again, as we did earlier this week. They're not Cinderella. They have a ton of talent. They're tenacious on D. And they just beat two teams that have to look all year. Alabama, great team. Michigan, great team. And UCLA took care of business. But... There's something next level about Gonzaga. The Zags are favored by two touchdowns. They've won 34 straight games. They've won 27 straight by double digits. I want to stress, I love UCLA, but they have a date with an all-time team. And spoiler alert, Gonzaga is going to win the Gonzaga Invitational. You know that popular meme when you have two Spider-Men pointing at each other? That's my official preview for Baylor and Houston. 
This is going to be a show tomorrow with two teams that are excellent when it comes to defense, rebounding, clutch play, and winning. Scott Drew is just superb and has Baylor playing its best ball of the season. They're clicking. They're confident. They were great all year. Had a little bit of a lag after a COVID pause, and now they're really rocking and rolling at the right time. And Drew is a gem. I mean, jogged them at the Rolodex. Baylor was almost defunct, rocked by a heinous scandal, and Scott Drew took over. And this is all a residue of amazing design. I mean, you saw Arkansas run into a wall in the second half, that wall being the Baylor defense. Arkansas missed 12 straight shots at one point in the second half. Now, Houston is going to be a major challenge because, like Scott Drew, Kevin Sampson is a tremendous, a great coach. And Houston plays hard and plays tough and changes games with their incredible savvy and brawn. Houston has earned this. The Cougars have simply been on fire down the stretch of the season. I expect this game to be fantastic, but Baylor has been the better version of Spider-Man all season. Give me Baylor to win a physical and fun ball game.